Now, students from past decades have told us what they have received from this institution as they've gone out into life. And in our follow-up uh, studies, here are some of the things they said. They gained a commitment to engage the world for worthy purposes. Confidence in who they are as a person and the accompanying poise and voice to accomplish what they desire. A willingness to take on responsibilities, engage people in places that they never thought they would before the Dickinson experience. An appreciation of the productive balance between selfish desire and shared community values. And a sense of achievement based on individual effort with staff guidance and a feeling that faculty, the staff, and fellow students are supportive of them for life. The faculty I had here, I had been friends with for my entire life. They recommended to me where I went to graduate school, Johns Hopkins. They guided me into a Fulbright. I had no idea nor my family what in the world a Fulbright was. And they were with me the whole way and still are today. Now, these are the learned habits of mind that these young people, these Dickinsonians, carry with them beyond the limestone walls. And it is in large part within our student residential life that these skills must be encountered and honed. A distinctively American residential liberal arts education is intentional in its ambition to educate far more than scholars. Some places forget that. We are not about creating more professors only. We're creating citizens, leaders, people also who can participate and follow in an informed manner. It is this intention we must serve. We are confident in our direction as we see the results in our alumni with regard to a key aspect of civic engagement. We recently received empirical evidence. Yes, we do look at what we think is the right thing to measure. We recently received empirical evidence in an alumni survey that verifies how active the vast majority of our graduates are as citizens. The survey revealed that in the past two years, nearly 90% of our alumni have engaged in volunteer work in their communities. In 2008, 85% of respondents voted in national and or local election, a rate at least 50% higher than the national average. And last year, 95% of the alumni respondents made a financial contribution to a nonprofit organization in their community or nationally. Now, Dickinson is a noisy place. We talk about issues that matter. We do not sweep them under the rug. A lot of places just want them to go away, but not here. And if you came here, you spent time, you say, oh my goodness, this place suffers from every malady in the world but it's because we engage, we talk, and that's part of our educative process. And we take these 21st century skills and we live them, and students are not at all hesitant to uh, approach us about issues. Let me give you just very briefly one exchange that involved me and a student. My name is G, and I'm a rising sophomore proudly at Dickinson College. I'm very active in Amnesty International, and one of our campaigns next semester will be to educate the community about the inhumanitarian and unsustainable practices of Coca-Cola abroad, encouraging students to not necessarily abstain from it on an individual basis, but to use a method of positive sub substitution. But recently, I have reconsidered a shift of focus into something more current that our college is going through, the Starbucks transition. I love it already. All right, this is an email to me. I am working for Alarm. That is a special uh, uh, water quality effort we have here. This summer and a few months ago, I stumbled into the Biblio Cafe in the library and noticed a sign that said, now proudly serving Starbucks coffee. Please, proudly serving Starbucks coffee. In a way, it is ironic for Dickinson to support Starbucks because of its inhumanitarian, unsustainable activities abroad and excellent methods of greenwashing our society to resources as basic as the website. Since I also work in admissions, and this gets at how candid we are, I understand how it can be tempting to cater to the search categories of prospective students who have fallen into the caffeine-guzzling, frappuccino-loving culture we have become. <laughs> this is a sophomore, by the way. But they, I can't wait till she's a senior, okay. <laughs> but why should we cater to this negative aspect of society? We are Dickinson, we know who we are whose globally engaged fundamental values go against the grain and stand out to turn the rest of the crowd around, especially in humanitarian sustainability issues. I'm kind of nervous as a tour guide to focus on our global leadership and then say, oh, by the way, we now have Starbucks. Okay, I love it, all right. My response, dear G, delighted to hear from you. 
<laughs> and pl I am. And pleased that you are engaging the and pleased that you're engaging the issue. Firstly, the college is not making a transition to Starbucks. The Biblio will be the only location to serve Starbucks. You will have a big choice of coffees. Secondly, we did some checking into the validity of those very charges a few years ago and discovered that Starbucks had corrected the situation as now being praised in some quarters. If you have up-to-date and valid information to the contrary, please pass that on to me. Situations can change quickly in this complex world where all is not as it may seem. All right, then she comes back. Thank you for a response. This is all within about five minutes. <laughs> yes, Starbucks has done a little bit to improve its ethical actions like the switch to RBC, H free milk and purchase more free trade, OCA 2009, but it has done a lot more to improve its marketing and website as well. Starbucks is still one of the top greenwashing examples. I do a lot of work in website and design and research company websites and Starbucks is one, of, is one with much bull as discoverable with their vague statements of saving the world. I won't praise them oh too much. And then she goes on. Then I respond with the following. That is, gee, just for this being a good and important exercise, I'm going to press you on your sources of information. Our lawyers are putting together a fact sheet on Starbucks and some initial findings from third party sources. See below. Not Starbucks influenced or Avisky oriented groups. Initial findings seem to reveal a picture a bit different from your assertions. Might you list your sources and their relationship to Starbucks or Avisky groups? This is a good exercise anyway. It does not conflict with looking into free trade coffee. And then, and I love it, she comes back. President Durden, I appreciate your desire to exercise my credibility. This is why I like the Dickinson experience with a little smiley face. And then she goes on. Again, this is just an example of the, the style, the personality of this institution. And do not overlook that. Institutions have personalities. They have desire. They have ambition. They have passion. Remember what I said about looking for a place and feeling that match. It's all part of it. This is a perfect example of a, civic, a civil activist dialogue at its best in the Dickinson community. And this case is not an atypical one. The student and the president, we do this often, seeking understanding about an issue that matters in the 21st century. Now, of course, as this week's editorial in the student newspaper, The Dickinsonian, professes with regard to sustainability, that while the Dickinson dimensions may be known, they are not always grasped and practiced by all students. That is our delightful challenge in an engaged undergraduate education that is Dickinson. We invite you, our prospective students, to consider if our engagement with these dimensions, with this knowledge set, this skill set, is an effort that you too want to define learning at a most critical time in your lives. We welcome you and your voice to join with those already seeking and preparing for a life of accomplishment and service in the most complex century that is yours. We invite you to an education that is and will always be a work in progress and is comfortable and confident in such ambiguity and uncertainty. Where others see gray, we at Dickinson, for you in the 21st century, because you are our subject, your undergraduate education and that only, where others see gray, we see the clear outlines of opportunity, engagement, and high performance. Thank you and enjoy the day. <laughs>